Hey, this is the first time I've ever done this. This is the Protectors, Jason Piccolo here with Athena. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, how are you? So let's talk trafficking. Yes. Trafficking. You're writing some stuff about it? I have, I've been researching sex trafficking for the past five or six years. Okay. It started out with, I had to choose a topic for dissertation and I had already been studying pedophiles and um, sex offenders for the past 15 years. Okay. So it kind of transitioned into that and I actually went to Thailand and did field research there for two years. Well, let's backtrack. Let's tell, talk about your background. You were in the Marines and you said that you were a lioness. What is that? The lioness program, what happened from around 2006 to 2008 before they allowed females to be in combat positions. Mm -hmm. And during that time, the, due to the cultural and religious restrictions in the areas that we were engaged in combat, they were getting, they were catching on to that and they were starting to smuggle in all the contraband and weapons okay, and hide yeah. it all with the women. And since our yeah. men couldn't go anywhere near the women, um, they were getting all these weapons inside the city. So they needed the females out there, so they, they engaged this program starts called the Lioness Program. Okay. And it was it's volunteer, and I volunteered, and I was attached to different infantry, infantry units throughout the city of Fallujah in 2008. Oh, wow. That's pretty intense, Amazing. man. Very cool. I actually got to be a grunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So how did you get involved with human trafficking? I, and right now you're wearing the Vets for yes, Child Rescue. Yes, Veterans for Child I've Rescue. I've had Greg on the show, so I mean, it's really uh, cool. Yes. Yeah. I have been dying to meet him, so <laughs> I can't wait to run into him. Um, I did start working for, I, I am a volunteer, uh, okay. their investigative team leader for them. Very cool. Um, I have always been, I, due to my childhood, um, I had, um, I was raped at an early age, mm -hmm. and my, I have a family member that's act, who actually raped me ended up being a pedophile. Oh. And I couldn't understand it. I can't understand, I couldn't comprehend that kind of evil. Mm -hmm. So as I grew older, um, I also experienced military sexual trauma, which is very prevalent in the military, yeah. especially the Marine Corps. Um, and I'm the kind of person that I really need to understand something to be able to process it and move mm -hmm. on from it. So I started going to school, I went to school, um, and I was taking classes for domestic security management, my okay. undergrad. And I took a forensics uh, psychology class and I became fascinated and I started studying pedophiles and sex offenders. So I have been doing that since my undergrad. I've um, been studying them for like 15, 16 years now. And, and you know, that's one of the things is like, you're getting deep inside this and not many people really know what's going on in the trafficking world. They don't. I mean, they, they think of trafficking as just like, someone getting kidnapped, brought across the border, and used as a prostitute, but there's so much to it. Absolutely. It's, it's pedophilia, it's, it's, oh my gosh, it's labor and sex trafficking, men, women, and children. Yep. And now there's organ trafficking, I think yes. that's out of control, black market, and all that kind of stuff, so it's scary. And what people don't realize, you know, they tell you to be aware, um, you know, like there's this thing going around on social media having everyone, oh, pay attention to that mom yes. and kid walking through the parking lot. Yes, we absolutely should. However, mm -hmm. most of the crimes that are announced on television are all over. Yes, those are those crimes. Those are the stranger yes. crimes. However, we both know that mm -hmm. those stranger crimes are so rare. Yes. But they're the most reported. Uh -huh. The reason being is because the, actually the highest number of crime is from, I think it's 94% of child sexual assault is from somebody they know. Yeah. When, and 34% is from a family member. Those aren't going to be reported as often. No. So those are the ones that are the most prevalent. No one's talking about them. It's so much easier to say, you know, this stranger did this to me. I was mm -hmm. grabbed out of the parking lot, and absolutely, yeah, that absolutely. happens. And that's that's a stereotypical yes. trafficking victim. Yes. Not, I shouldn't say stereotypical trafficking. That's the scenario. Yes. However, it's it's your boyfriend. Yes, it's, it's, your, it's your boyfriend. Parents. I'm glad you bring that up because a lot of men, and I'm sure there's women out there, and that's how they they indoctrinate you into being a trafficking victim. Mm -hmm. Is they they groom play you. in your emotions. Yeah, they yep. groom you, yep. and it's exactly. it's absolutely prevalent in that scenarios and they prey on 
um, I just read an article. I was I was writing the article for um, trafficking in, in the USA, mm -hmm. and people are under the assumption that we bring them across the borders. It's no, not. Not all the time. They found the average age that a, a female enters the sex industry is from 12 to 14. There's differing statistics, but we know the statistics mm -hmm. are very hard to define due to lack of reporting. 12 years old. Oh my God. 60% are from foster homes or have spent time in the foster home. So what these predators do is they prey upon the vulnerable mm -hmm. because they know that those people need help. They know they have something that they can control them yeah. with. So those are the people that they go after. Uh, well, it's a lot to take in, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this interview here today is just to say, hey, you know what? Trafficking is a real problem, and it's domestic and international. So uh, where can we find you at? I have a company called Athena's Furies, uh, okay. and we have a website called athenasfuries.com. Okay. I am also a published author, um, Athena Ives author on Facebook. Okay. And I'm, I, you know, I do my best to try and help people overcome their trauma. Um, I published a book that deals with a lot of mm -hmm. empowering yourself Good. and using that trauma to enhance your life and to become stronger than you could ever. I'm a very big believer That's in what we need. you yeah. can take the worst moments of your life and use them to create the best moments of your life. Yes. It made me, it made me, I, I can take on anything. I'm strong. I am, <laughs> I can get through anything life throws at me. Awesome. And that's the message I want to share with every kind of trauma victim. Not victim, mm -hmm. survivor. Yeah, sur exactly. not, a, survivor. not a victim, I'm a victor. Mm -hmm. So just sharing that message you know, to people out there because trauma is trauma. We all Absolutely. have had some kind of trauma and I'm going to let everyone know that you don't have to let it break you. You can use it to empower you and strengthen you. And huge thing, I don't, know, I don't know too much about your background, but as far as mine, it can give you such a purpose and a yes. drive to mm -hmm. do amazing things in this world. We need more people like that. So thank you for what you do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, thanks, everybody.